Hey, what's going on? I'm Illegal Mist, and today I'm gonna to be showing Gwendolyn the Silent in Hydra. I wanted to go in, build and book her on my account, and show you all the best sets and some teams that you can bring her in on to make sure you maximize your utility with her. Hopefully this video helps you guys determine whether or not you wanna pull her from your fragments. This took me over 10 hours to make, so make sure you guys like the video and subscribe if you like this sort of content. Let's get right into it. A quick overview of her kit is pretty simple. Her A1 provides you with an increased duration of enemy debuffs for one turn, and it has three chances to proc at 50%, so you're going to have a pretty decent chance that she's going to continuously proc the enemy's debuffs, and you're going to have those debuffs on them for a lot longer. Her A2 comes in, attacks all enemies, does decreased speed and leech, and if the enemy is under two or more debuffs, then she'll also place a decreased accuracy. Her A3 comes in, and basically it's going to provide your team with an AoE attack and an increased accuracy. If any of the enemies have block debuffs on them, she'll also take that and then place block debuffs on your team for one turn. And this moves also on a three-turn cooldown. The interesting thing about this champion is the fact that her crit damage scales based off of every 10 accuracy she has. So 10 accuracy equates to one crit damage. And then she also gets an extra turn anytime she uses any three skills. And that's including her A1. So when you look at her kit and you see that she's an attack-based damage dealer, you're going to think immediately that she's a good damage dealer for Hydra. But in reality, she's a decent damage dealer that provides more utility than damage. So I wouldn't recommend building this champion specifically for damage. But if you can, try and add a little extra crit rate and crit damage and attack so that she can increase her numbers in case you want that extra support damage dealer role. I think champions like this are really good in Hydra because she's going to provide your team with a lot of utility while also still being able to get champions that are devoured out in case you need it. One thing that's really interesting about Gwendolyn's passive is whenever she ally attacks with a teammate, that counts as one of her skills and it gives her the chance to get a extra turn because of it. So she hasn't taken a turn yet. If we go in with ally attack number one, that would count as one of her turns, and then ally attack number two. And then we'll save the ally attacks just because she's so close to her next turn. I just want to show you all. So this is her third skill now. So she'll go in, and then she gets the extra turn. So now she's on a one turn cooldown, basically. I'll save the refresh. So now it should be two turns that she's taken without an extra turn. And then a third. And then we could see right there that it procced that extra turn while she was attacking. I'm not sure if it also works with counterattack, so we're about to find out. All right, I couldn't get it to work exactly when I just had the counterattack champion in. So let's try and see what happens. If we use Gwendolyn with a counterattack champion, and if this counts as well towards her uh, next ability. So that's two turns that she's taken essentially, and then this should be the third. So, yeah, so counterattack also works for her, which can be a good and a bad thing because she's going to outrun that counterattack buff very, very quickly because she's essentially every time she gets hit with a attack when she has counterattack on it's going to reduce the cooldown of her passive so she's going to have more turns which is great but she's not going to have as many turns with counterattack on so if you're using her on something like fire knight hard it might be a little more difficult right so i did the ally attacks and the counterattacks to show that her a1 does proc the passive with the grants an extra turn so now i'm going to hope for a lucky counterattack and we'll see if it works or not so this is two attacks that she's done. And there's the counterattack. And boom, she goes right into it. So immediately we can see having her in counterattack accessories is going to make her even better than she already is. So that's great to know. I did have to spend 600k in silver to find that out. But for you all, it was worth it. Now that we've shown that she procs her passive from the ally attacks and counterattacks and counterattack accessories, let's take her into Hydra and show off the results based on her Relentless and Hex set. All right, so this was the end of the run for our hard run where we had Gwendolyn in a Relentless set. And this is the team that I typically use for my hard team. And it does right around 300 to 330 million 
with a different champion in the sl slot that Gwendolyn is in. And typically, I either run Valkanen or Mithrala, just kind of depending on how I feel about it. But we can see here that Gwendolyn putting up a decent amount of damage, but we have the Razzlevarg doing the vast majority of it. So with Gwendolyn in this team, it ran pretty well, but the issue we came into was any hard team that is doing a lot of damage is going to run into the turn limit. And with Gwendolyn in Relentless, she was getting sometimes five, six, I think one time even seven turns right in a row. And while it's really cool to watch, you're not getting as much damage as you would when a champion like Razzlevarg is taking turns. So it's actually a detriment to your team. So if you're using her on a hard or a difficulty where you're maxing out the turn limit, I definitely recommend not using her in Relentless because of the wasted turns. I also did a brutal run with Gwendolyn in the Relentless set. And we can see Husk doing the 34 mil. So he did the majority of the damage, but a really solid showing from her. She didn't do as much as Lydia because Lydia is in the hex set, but we can see when she has a relentless set and she's able to kind of cycle through her turns as much as possible, she really shines. I'd recommend having her in a team with an ally attacker if possible, or even a counterattack champion if you're interested in that kind of team. But definitely she's able to pump out a lot of damage just on her own and she provides your team with a lot of utility. She was one of our main sources of healing uh, with her leech. So this was the run that we did with Gwendolyn in a hex set instead of the relentless set. We can see we did a lot more damage, about 50 mil more, because she was able to come in and provide our team with less turns while also being able to help us increase our damage. Razzlevarg came in, he did 134 mil this time, and we actually outdamaged Inquisitor Shamel. So Really just a solid, solid showing from her. Lydia's also in a hex set. So between Gwendolyn and Lydia, we had hex up on all of the heads pretty much as much as possible. It was a lot more than if we just had one hex champion in the slot that Gwendolyn... Even if Lydia wasn't in a hex set, I still think that Gwendolyn in a hex set over a hex champion would be beneficial. She really, really pumped through her turns pretty quickly, um, even without the Relentless set. And it was awesome. Like, I, I really think this champion shines in Hydra. And see, the damage she did was really respectable. All right, so it looks like our team for Brutal is actually much better with Gwendolyn in that slot than any other champion that I've tried before. So I'm really happy with this. Cardiel behind me, he, of course, is our primary source of healing with the A1 heals. And having Sissy on the team is fantastic as well. But Husk ended up dying probably I think maybe 80 million in so he could have done a lot more he just got killed by a reflect damage and yeah I mean a full auto run Gwendolyn came in and really really the star of the show here because of those hexes and those extra turns she gets from Cardiel her in that uh, curse set is really really good now I would say if you're running her with an ally attacker in a provoke set she's going to be really good as well I don't think it'll cover your Provoke 100%, but I think it'll do a lot better than the majority of other champions because she's getting that ally attack, which helps decrease the amount of turns she needs for that extra turn. I'm going to do a free regroup on this team, and then we can look at the stats. So for my Gwendolyn build, I have her in a Cursed set so that we get the 50% chance of placing Hex. I also actually didn't grab the Mastery for the extra 5% chance. Um... So I'll probably go back and reset the mastery so that I can get that because I think that'll actually be really nice. I went down and grabbed Methodical which increases the damage from the default skill up to 10% because I thought maybe she would be good for damage but in reality getting that extra 5% chance for um, not only increasing the duration of enemy debuffs but also for the hex set I think that would be uh, significantly better actually so I'm going to change that right after this. So for Gwendolyn's stats on Hydra, she's rocking 37k HP, 3.9k attack, 2.8k defense, 245 speed, about 70% crit rate, 181 crit damage, 249 for the resistance, which actually works out pretty well because with the decreased accuracy on the enemy, you might actually get some resist because of that. And then just under 200 accuracy and the 8% ignore. You can see she's got a couple pieces that aren't fully uh, rolled up, specifically her boots, which can get another 10% speed. 
And then for her curse set, it's really, I tried to grab like whatever cursed gear I have for the most damage, but I don't really have like, I, I only have like seven other cursed pieces. So really, I don't have a whole lot extra that I could even throw on her. Like I said before, I have my Lydia in a cursed set as well, but my Lydia is in my hard team, which is going to be doing a lot more damage. So for now, I'll keep her in this, but I'm going to try and improve her gear pretty drastically. For her skills, I do have her fully booked out. Originally, I was kind of bummed because I was so excited. I booked her out completely without looking at where the books landed, and her A1 didn't get any books until the very end. But I'm actually happy with it because getting that 50% chance to increase the duration of debuffs is really nice. For blessings on her, I would say if you're going to do a complete damage build and you have a 6 star, uh, it would be nice to get cruelty because you can decrease the defense of the enemies or you could go in and get the crushing rend for the ignoring percentage of the defense. But realistically, I would probably just run her in something either like Brimstone or um, Cruelty for a lower level, just because Cruelty is going to give her pretty much every stat that she wants, as well as having so many AoE attacks, she's really going to be able to decrease the boss's defense for your whole team, help increase your damage. You could also just do Phantom Touch if you want to get a little extra damage, but I think the Cruelty might be better in a long-term run, because again... She's a support champion that deals damage, not a damage dealer that provides support. Okay, I forgot to record her when she had the Relentless gear on and what the stats were for it, but we can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the two sets right here on the right. So she was rocking about four, uh, 39k HP, 4.2k attack, 2.3k defense, 243 speed, 70% crit rate, and uh, 241 crit damage well as 287 for the accuracy so i tried to pump up her accuracy a little bit more so that she could deal a little bit extra damage um and then her speed was a little bit higher because the boots were already rolled up but we can see it's a pretty similar build but just a little more damage focused and we could see from the stats that she was doing she was doing a little bit more damage on the actual hits but as far as being able to provide the team with more damage the hex set i think was actually a better choice as far as using Gwendolyn in dungeons, I don't think she's going to be a best in slot champion, but I do think she'd be good for progression. The same thing can be said about the Cursed City or Doom Tower floors. I don't think she's necessarily going to be the best champion that you can bring in, but for Cursed City, there might be some floors that you're struggling with, where if you throw her in, she's going to provide the utility you need. Having her in a stun set or another CC type set could really be the difference for some of the floors where you need just a little bit more RNG in your Getting those extra turns means that she has two AoEs, a single attack, and then immediately goes back to another AoE. So it's almost essentially like she's always going to have an AoE attack whatever turn she gets. A couple of their content creators made videos on her and Demon Lord, and I think she's going to be pretty good, and there will be some interesting speed tunes that you can use with her because of that extra turn mechanic that she has. Again, my primary showcase was in Hydra, but if you have any questions about how I built her or any other build suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. So now that I've gone in and showed off Gwendolyn the Silent within Hydra, I want you guys to see my perspective on whether or not I think she's worth taking out of your Fragment summons building, booking, and actually use. Overall, when I had her in the Relentless set, I was going to say probably if you need someone in Hydra that gives you a decreased speed, but after having her in this Hex set, which really is pretty poor gear, especially considering that there's almost no accuracy and no sustainability, and she's still coming in and dealing as much damage as our primary damage dealers in Hydra Brutal, I would definitely say she's worth taking out of your fragments and using. I was really surprised by this champion because I thought she was going to be pretty good, and she was, and then I looked at her kit a little bit more, and I realized how to utilize her best, which is by putting her in one of these sets that's able to provide your team with a little additional support. So if you want, you can build her in that curse set or the provoke set, and then bring her in with any ally attack champion that you can. If you have a Mikage, she would be great to go in that team as well, because it's another ally attacker that decreases the passive skill cooldown so that she can get that extra turn a little bit faster. Overall, I would say that this champion's an A tier, bordering on S tier, depending on the gear that you have her on for Hydra. 
But other areas of the game, she probably falls off a little bit because she doesn't have that niche use case in most places. That's all I've got in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I can't wait to try her out in a few more areas. And if I find any other crazy comps with her, I'll make sure to let you guys know. But in the meantime, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.